much. I want to buy myself a guitar. I want to make myself a guitar. Is it a phone book? What can I do? You want it in the phone book? How's it going on the internet? I want it on the internet. Mark and Bailey guitar. So I showed up his place. She said, we're going to make a guitar. I said, I don't know how to make a guitar. I said, I know how to make a guitar. So he said, hey, you came to learn how to make a guitar. I said, okay. We made a guitar. It was cool. It was really cool. I said, I want someone I'm up the pearl. He said, that would be quite difficult. But, you know, I'll do it for you if that's what you like. I said, I want three headstocks. He says, well, if you're hungry, if you must. And then I decided I want to make myself a little ukulele. He says, we got loads of ukulele. So I made one. So if you wanna make yourself a guitar, get yourself down to the bed of guitar, make a man easy to live up somewhere there. I don't exactly know where we are, but we're near it. <laughs> Welcome folks. Welcome to the Bailey Workshop um, for the guitar making channel. Yeah. What's this one called? Uh, this could go horribly wrong. <laughs> so, cheers all by the way. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As usual, Carol's going to be over there to take your questions. Um, but today, I'm going to be doing something that I shouldn't be. <laughs> so, as I said on the last live stream, this, this is a scarf neck blank that I made. I actually made it live on the YouTube whilst some of you guys were watching. Um, but in my excitement and my haste, <laughs> I managed to um, forget to do the truss rod slot. So, what am I always telling you? The most important thing, <laughs> golden rule, check twice, cut once. Yeah, well, I forgot to check that. I forgot to check the order I was doing my lists, my jobs. So... Did you have a schedule? I did have a schedule, but I wasn't following it. So what should I have done? Well, what I should have done is followed my own online course where I've laid all the jobs out, um, in sequence, all in the right order, and we've filmed the process step by step, and um, we basically put together um, build your own um, acoustic or electric guitar. Starting with a blank piece of paper, you can design and build your own um, electric or acoustic guitar following my plans. And what I'm always saying is, you need to know what to do, what order to do it, and you need to know when to stop. So when it's done, you need to know what to do, what order to do, and when, to, when it's done. So that's what I'm here for. And usually I get it right, but occasionally <laughs> it does happen, doesn't it, Carol? I am wrong sometimes, aren't I? Once, I think this is the one time, isn't it? Yeah, I was wrong once Film. and this, this is that time. Mm. So I'm gonna hopefully demonstrate today how to fix this problem. So I've done it in the wrong order. I've cut my neck out before I've made my truss rod slot. And let me just show you what we normally do is start with a, a blank like this. And it's very easy just to do the slot in it because we just use a simple um, router with an edge guide. So the minute I cut my shape out, I've just made everything 10 times more difficult because I can't just use my router edge guide as normal. But I have got a little trick up my sleeve that I'm gonna hopefully um, get, dig myself out of that hole with. Um, here's a, a set neck blank as well, or, or an acoustic neck blank would be a two inch neck. And again, the first thing we do is the truss rod slot <laughs> because it's much easier to work with a big solid lump of wood than once you've cut your shape out. So, that's what we're doing today, folks. Um, usually we do these live streams every Wednesday and Saturday, and they last about an hour, or sometimes a bit shorter, sometimes a bit longer. We aim for about an hour, and because I'm not great at talking, I like to do a physical demonstration, at least one physical demonstration related to guitar making. Um, 
So I've spent the last eight months doing this now, I think, something like that. Um, every Wednesday and Saturday we've missed one or two, I think. Um, but we, we started with a full-on live stream where I built this guitar, which is a fairly basic version. Um, we call this um, Lockdown Lucy. And then I did, that's a whole playlist. So if you want to find that, the links are all in the description. Um, so I did another playlist, which is tools and techniques for guitar makers, which shows you all the basic tools and methods that I use when I'm building guitars. There's about 10 or 12 of those, but once you've got those down, the world is your oyster. So I do highly recommend that you go to guitarmaking.co.uk and sign up as a premium member, then you get access to all the courses. Um, there is a load of free stuff if you just want to come and be a free member, um, or you can be a supporter. But to get access to all the premium courses, past, present and future, you're going to need to become a premium member. So head over to guitarmaking.co.uk and uh, I'll just take this little opportunity to thank all our current and um, all our new members. Thank you so much to you guys. Um, it's our premium members that are actually keeping us going at the moment and without you guys we'd be going hungry and I'd probably get kicked out on the streets. <laughs> So thanks, um, yeah, much appreciated. Um, premium members is what keeps it guitar making alive in the UK for us, at least. So thank you. And now um, Carol's over there, as I said earlier, to answer your questions. So if you do have any questions that I don't cover in the next um, short amount of time, then um, type them in, in the chat and Carol will shout them out. Uh, hopefully at an appropriate time um, <laughs> and e even then if we don't get it to it in the next hour because it's a vast subject and there's so much to cover um, if we don't get to it in the next hour don't worry just leave a comment um, or if you've got any ideas about what you want me to cover in the future make sure to leave a comment um, and you can also head over to the guitar making site where we've got a free forum where you can see what all our members are getting up to. You don't have to take my word for it. You can uh, see what everybody else is doing as well. So right, how the, in God's name, are we gonna get the truss rod slot in here? Wow. Well, well, well. First thing is to have a sip of tea. And do you have any questions yet, Carol? Oh, I'm still saying hello. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, um, the live streams are getting busier and uh, we appreciate that. Um, what, what would be great is if you would all click the like button and make sure you're all subscribed as well because uh, somebody needs to tell YouTube if we're doing a good thing here, somebody needs to let YouTube know. So let's see if I can line that up a bit better. Brilliant. Right, so trust rod slot in here. How are we going to do that? Well, I've got another board which is flat and straight on, on one edge. And I'm going to use this as the guide for my router. I'm going to stick my, um, my neck blank on here like this. So, double sided tape. This stuff, by the way, is um, available on the, on the shop, guitarmaking.co.uk. This is double-sided tape, but not all double-sided tape is created equally. Um, this stuff is actually called exhibition tape. And it's much better than your average double-sided tape because it sticks super strong. But the best thing about it is it's easy to remove afterwards without damaging your workpiece that's what it was invented for what it was invented for um, putting the tiles down uh, putting carpets down in exhibition centers because they kept on ruining the tiles underneath so the NEC commissioned this tape to be made so it sticks really well, but it's easy to be removed. Um, of course, I'm sure some of you in the chat 
are already suggesting alternatives <laughs> for using double-sided tape. But I'm not going to go there because I think you should use the proper stuff for the proper job. I'm just going to make sure because this has got um, this headstock's got an angle on it. I'm going to make sure that I uh, I'm sticking it down only on the flat bit. And what I'm going to try and do is get it the same distance in from the edge on both sides. Dead on 50 mil that is. 50 mil. So I'm measuring from this edge here. Don't know if you can see that. Um, to the centre. I maybe should have chosen a different colour block. It's black. But there's the edge of it there. And I'm measuring. And it's 50 mil to the centre. So it might take a bit of lining up. But I can check it with my router. Now, the stroke of luck I had here was that my router has a base on it. This base is... It's just deep enough so that it will sit on my neck here and the base is actually resting on the block there. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that for you. Are you willing to take a question before you start? Uh, yes, I'll take questions actually, before I do any routing. It, it's uh, TV 101 and he's actually, he's actually asked a really useful question mark. Um, Don't sound surprised. I'm just, bit, I'm just teasing him. So his head's still cold. But anyway... Um, <coughs> so can you see that, guys? It's going to rest along... Here's my router fence. Like mini marks in the way is what's... Mini marks so in the way. Turn mini mark off. Cheers. Put him down the bottom. <laughs> right. Um, but let me just ask, tell you what he asked, because it's Go relevant. Right? So what he said is that... Um, so what he was asking is... Presumably, if the truss rod is not properly centred, i.e. wonky, could that walk the neck when, when it was tightened? What, what's the consequence, I guess, of it? That was a side TV. Just I'm trying to... I'm computing. Um, I think it would have to be pretty badly off for it to actually twist the neck. So don't worry about that. But um, I'm just adjusting my router here to get it as close as possible. But what I do suggest is that obviously if you do your router slot first, um, then you can just draw your neck centred to the slot that you've made. So you can't go wrong, can you? See what I mean? You can't go wrong if you do your slot first. So don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> just to reiterate, just to reiterate, um, if for anybody who's just joined us or whatever, don't do this. I'm doing this, this is completely in the wrong order. It makes it much more difficult for myself. Um, but I'm just demonstrating for this for other people because I know, as I said last time as well, um, um, what did I say? Well, you were talk talking about you were... It has come to my yeah. attention! <laughs> people have done things... It came to my attention that people were coming to the website and they've already started building guitars. And, of course, everybody gets it in the wrong order. <laughs> everybody wants to cut the shape out first. Look, I'm building my neck. And they've cut the shape out. And it's like, oh, no, they haven't done their truss rod slot yet. <laughs> so I know that it's going to be difficult for you. Um, you know who you are. <laughs> Mention no names. But yeah, I'm not going to um, call you out or anything, but um, there's, there's people out there who've already cut out their neck shape, but they haven't done their truss rod slot yet. So I'm showing you one way to get yourself out of that hole. There are other ways, but this is just one. Um, get yourself a board that's basically the same size as the original neck blank. Um, and it's a nice big square piece of wood. Stick your neck on top of that. Make sure the centre line is lined up so it's the right distance from the edge, an equal distance from the edge. 
So I'm quite happy with my setup there. What I'm going to do is just give it a good squeeze with a clamp. This tape is activated by pressure. So the harder you press, the harder it sticks. In fact, what I think I might do is I'm just going to put some on this side as well. So we can stick it down to the bench also. Why not? Just need to make sure that the guide edge sticks out from the bench because I, I, it needs to, um, the router needs to guide against my guide edge and not the bench. So all I need to do now is set up the router. So I'll just show you quickly how I'm going to do that. Mark, rock, rock and Roller 912 says, um, has, the, has the, the net got any last requests? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should have... Uh, should have mentioned that at the start. This could go horribly wrong. Um, only one. Uh, there is a chance that only one of us survives this episode. Uh, but there'll be no swearing, will there, Mark? This week. No swearing this week. Carol's promised I'll to be on her best behaviour. <laughs> I'm going to change the angle down there so we can see it from all the different angles. Um, while I'm working, Carol can switch between the, the cameras, get us the best shot. So what I'm going to do, set the router up first, is... Um, oh, I need my truss rods, Carol. They're just there. Thank you. Here's a couple of truss rods to show you. I'm going to be using this one. It's just a one-way adjustable truss rod. Um, quite simple. goes into a quarter-inch slot, and I'm going to go about... Well... This is, um, it's about nine mil deep. So I'm going to go 10 or 11 mil deep. And then in the end, we glue, we glue um, a fillet down on top of it. Small piece of wood down on top to, um, just to hold it in place. Um, the fillet will stick up proud and we plane it flush before we stick the fretboard on. So that's the general idea. So the fretboard sits into a slot here. So I'm going to mark the end of the truss rod. Um, this one's 460 mil long because I'm going for a 24 fret design. I've marked the end of my board and the basic rule of the truss rod is it needs to go um, from past the first fret and it needs to go into the chunky part of the neck. So the solid part of the neck that's going to be um, screwed or glued, depending on the construction, into the body, the truss rod needs to protrude into that area. So where I've got it marked here is fine, but we need our slot to be a little bit longer so that we can get a truss rod key in. So the truss rod sits there, but I'm going to make the truss rod slot a little bit longer so that we can get our truss rod key in. I just use the length of the nut there as just as a guide. There's no law how long that needs to be as long as you can get your truss rod in. So if you want to know more about um, how to actually um, do your truss rod and different types of truss rod, we do cover that all on the course. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my cutter right to the end of where my slot finishes and then I'm going to clamp a block there. So that's what I call a butt stop. That's going to cause a flurry of comments. Here's my butt stop. <laughs> and I'm going to do the same at the other end. What I'm going to do is put a block on and then I'm just going to clamp that in place with, I've got a, just a little clamp there, that'll do. 
So my bump stop. So now I've set the extent of my truss rod slot, which goes from, from that butt stop to that one. Oh, I've got that wrong. Um, now actually it's catching on my clamp there, so I've, I just need to move my clamp round and then I can get the full length until I hit my butt stop. Um, close enough for jazz. So now all I need to do is set the depth. So your router might be different to mine, but the, the basic technique is, is very similar. So what I'm gonna do is take the cutter down until it touches the wood. Now I need to tell the router that that's zero. So I'm gonna bring my stop down. Here's my stop here. And lock it. And then on this router, I tell it to zero there. And now I can dial in 11 mil. 11 to 11 and a half mil. So what you can see I've done is I've created a gap here of 11 to 11 and a half mil. If I take it off the neck and bring it down, you'll see that that's how deep it will now allow me to go. That's way too deep to go in one though. So we're gonna split that into four or five cuts. Um, four or five cuts, about two millimeters per cut. So, um, I'm going to have a little practice run first. I always have a little dry run just to make sure everything's okay. And in this case, I've got to be super, super careful not to slip. Having said all that, if there is a little wobble here and there, it is all going to be hidden by the fretboard. So it might not be the end of the world, all right? Now, I'm all set up. I've got my router centered. I've got my butt stop set and I've got my depth set. So I'm ready to go. Um, but Carol's got a couple of questions. Carol's got some comments before we actually do it. So let's well, do think, those first. Well, it was just that um, Matt Beals asked a, a question which is worth answering now. Hi, Matt. You might have asked it or you might have sort of covered it. So forgive me. Right, hold on, I've just missed the first line off. Right, so um, Matt Beals is saying, how far back can I install the truss rod from the nut line? I want to have the smallest channel on the headstock as possible so it's almost hidden. You need to have the adjustable part. So where it bends from, where it starts bending from, needs to be past the first fret. So, this would be bad. First fret, you can see the first fret there. This would be okay. As long as the bendy part of the truss rod is past the first fret, and this end of the truss rod should be in the fat part of the neck. Okay. How's our angle? That'd do, wouldn't it? Carol, you'll have to get the best angle for me. I'm going to go for it. So I'm going to take it down to right, hold on. Oh. about two mil at a time. I need to get um, some health and safety gear. So uh, I've got my mask somewhere. Uh, Mark, Matt, Tomon, hello. Matt, Matt is asking what bit are you using on your router? Uh, it's a quarter inch or a six mil, um, just a straight cutter, ordinary cutter. We do supply the cutters on the site because, um, well, the, the only reason I supply anything on the site was because we found some things were difficult to get. And so I wanted to help people out. That's basically what it's about. So um, you will find all the cutters that I use 
for all my guitar building are all on the site and made them available to you guys. See that this camera, you, you want to move this down when you start a new. Can do, yeah. And your, your hair needs to go down the back. Yep. Cheers, Carol. Health and safety executive. Right, now just one thing I've noticed that um, when I'm routing live, I've noticed that the microphone actually picks up my inner thoughts. <laughs> so if you hear some strange voices while I'm routing, don't worry about it. It's just Mark's inner thoughts. Okay, nothing to be alarmed. Right, so do I, am I moving this one down? You do whatever you like, Carol. Oh, but I'm busy. Oh, my inner thoughts were quiet, weren't they, that time? They were asking what you think they, what they were. <laughs> <laughs> my inner thoughts were silent. It just goes to show, doesn't it? That's why I love guitar making, because it stills my inner... <laughs> yeah, but, but you're saying we should have captioned your inner thoughts as you were going along. Some people are amazed that you had inner thoughts. <laughs> well, I didn't, evidently. Uh, tin Marb I was says, concentrating. Tin Marb says, um, Mark's thoughts, how do I swap this one out for one that I did earlier without anyone noticing? Oh, easy. It's all in the cut, isn't it? Yeah, it's all in the editing. We're not really here. Yeah. We're actually on a beach. I'll just whip ladies. one out from under the bench like I normally do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I'm going to do now is... Uh, Can I just ask, because people, what, how are you, what are your feelings so far? How's it gone so far? Yeah, not bad, not bad. A little bit shaky at the start, wasn't it? <laughs> But I was getting the hang of it by the end, you know, having not done this before um, and doing it live in front of you lot. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
Um, yeah, so um, I, I want to mention one thing at this moment. Um, you should, of course, always unplug your router when you're changing cutters. Um, especially if you're a, a beginner, you know. Um, somebody recently pointed that out on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't always unplug my router. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I assume, I always assume that my router is live. Now, most of these routers have got clever switches that are well, really difficult to accidentally activate the switch. So um, my philosophy is, if you unplug it every time you change the cutter, um, there's going to be that one time where somebody else is involved and they didn't unplug the router. Because I run courses, you see, and this, this actually happens. Um, so when I'm running courses, um, I change all the cutters and nobody else is allowed to change cutters. And, um, you know, picture any professional workshop, a factory, for instance, they don't go around unplugging all their machines before they change the cutters. Um, I don't unplug my router every time. My personal preference is to always assume that the router's live and then I'm always really careful how I'm holding and touching the router. So that's just the way I do it. Um, your opinion may vary. I've been doing it for 20 years. Still got most, most of my fingers. <laughs> yeah, you can't count either. And I have met a lot of, um, a lot of um, older woodworkers with various digits or parts of digits missing. I cannot impress you how important this is to me because, well, I'm a player and I assume that most of you are players. And so I would really hate it if one of you did yourselves an injury, um, especially doing something that I told you to do. So especially if you're a beginner, make sure you unplug the router before you change the cutter. But um, even better, always assume that the router is live. And that's, that's my philosophy. So yeah, go on, Carol. Well, it's just a really appropriate question. So um, Steve Cup is in the in the workshop today, and he said, "Hi everyone, I haven't driven a router yet. Does it try to whiz off in an inappropriate direction?" Oh yes, it does. Yes, <laughs> yes, it does for sure. Yes. Um, so um, that is why when you saw me cutting there, did you notice that I was only cutting in one direction, and then I brought it back, and then I took the depth down and I did another cut. That's because um, I guarantee if you try and cut in both directions, you'll end up with a wonky slot because it will whiz off in an odd. It catches you by surprise. It's much better to just cut in one direction and then um, it's a lot safer and a lot less mistakes are made that way. Um, yes, so what you're seeing me use is this edge guide, right? And I'm making a straight slot. So if you're not making a straight slot, then you will use different methods. In fact, on the course, I show you, I believe it's four different methods of routing. So there's routing a slot, like you've just seen. Um, then there's using a pattern. So these are patterns, and I might as well mention it now. I was going to mention it in a bit, but seeing as how it's come up. Um, our patterns are now available on the site for you guys to buy. Um, They're nearly here. You can, you can make your own patterns, of course, and I do demonstrate how you do that. You can make all your own patterns, and I take pride in that. But if you want to save a bit of time, then there's no shame in buying a set of patterns. And then what I recommend is that you take a copy so that you never have to buy it again. Um, yeah, just done myself out of another load of business. But um, you only have to buy them once, take a copy, and you never have to buy it again. Um, so we have different patterns for all the different shapes, P90 shape, humbucker shape, um, profiling, copying shapes, um, control cavities, all, all that kind of thing. Um, so we've got routing a slot, we've got copying shapes, there's um, profiling with a not sorry, copying the shapes is called profiling. 
with a router. And what we do is we use um, something like this. See, these, these cutters have um, a bearing at the top and they follow the pattern, you see. So if there's a secret to guitar making, it's this. Copying with a bearing that's the same size as the pattern. Um, so we've got copy routing, routing a slot, and then there's surface routing. Surface routing is where you're routing, um, like the front and the back of the headstock is surface routed. Um, I've got one here that's had the, the headstock's been surface routed, see? So we could take that headstock down and we can make the headstock whatever thickness we want by routing down in layers. And that's what we call surface routing. And the last type of routing that we use is um, routing an edge. So it's the easiest. So this, this guitar, for instance, has got a radius on the edge. You can see that. And um, that's obviously done with a router as well. And so I think you need you actually need four cutters to build a guitar, that's all. Um, but you can use extra ones to help you. And they're all available on the, um, on the site. So brilliant question, thanks for that. Um, just before you move on, can we just clear up a few things that are, um, or the, I mean, the kind of questions and stuff in the chat? Oh yeah, and the patterns are landing in the workshop imminently. They're on their way here and then as soon as they get here, Carol's going to be putting them in boxes and sending them out to you guys. So if, if you've ordered one or a set, much appreciated. Yeah, Thank you waiting. very much. Sorry, sorry for that. And um, they're, they're, they're imminent arrival. So uh, they, they'll be on their way very, very soon. Go on, Carol. Okay, so um, so this discussions, uh, some discussions about the, the use of routers. And, and the, there's some people who say they love using their routers. Um, but can I just run a few things? So... Uh, so Brad Press said, hi Steve, make sure you are feeding against the direction of the rotation and if you've got a second side fence um, on the router, you can put it on the opposite side to make it less scary. Um, you, you cover... There are other way ways you can do it as well, yeah. You can actually copy out this slot as well if you've got a pre-existing pattern, you can use that. There's lots of different ways to do it and I'll show you all those different ways on the course. So if routing something that you're not sure about, and don't worry about that. Um, I show you everything that you need to know, right from like every little uh, part of it, like setting the depth, when to turn it on, when to turn it off. Um, it's pretty concise. Many people have had a lot of success with it. So um, yeah, if routing something you're worried about, definitely check that out. There's other things you can do as well, like there's these men's sheds you could join get some help from somebody else who's had some experience. Um, go on, Carol. Right, well, Rock and Roller 912 says, does it matter which side the edge guide goes on with the cut direction? So does that, does the edge guide affect the, the side that you put it on? Um, I think you can cut in any direction, to be honest when you're doing a slot like this because you're using the full width of the cutter so the cutter can't see a direction if you see what I mean um, you can cut either way but just make sure that you only cut one way having said that what you'll find is um, it might be easier to cut one way or another and so the only way to find out is just to, to test it doesn't matter which side the fence goes on no Right, one last thing before you uh, start the router up. Go on. Um, so somebody, uh, Hex, what's his name? Oh, Hex Hair, Hex Here, sorry. Uh, he said that he shellacks the, uh, patterns that he's made um, to protect them. But Bag Press says that um, these, our patterns, the ones that he's made, are made of moisture resistant MDF. Um, and so that, you know, that that's not needed. Yeah, of course, by all means, if you if you want to, you can shellac them, but you don't need to with these ones because they're already impregnated with stuff to make them moisture proof. Fantastic, or what? What I've done here then, guys, is the, the truss rod has a nut which is wider than the rest of the rod. 
and so I just need to widen the slot in this area just for the nut. So I've moved my block my butt stop has moved and I need to reset my depth because I've changed my cutter um, to a wider cutter just to widen out the slot in this case I'm using a, a half inch cutter or a 12 mil cutter but it doesn't matter what size it is as long as it's big enough for the, the rod So here we go again. Can you watch the cameras, Carol? Because I can't see. So that was really difficult because of this angle, it wasn't easy. It was really difficult to see. It depends on your, um, your particular router. But mine has got this massive hole in the base, so it's not ideal for, um, for routing this kind of thing. It might have actually been better using a different router. I could have used just my cheap old Bosch one. This has got a, a better base sometimes for this kind of thing. It's got a nice small hole. So it would have given me a bit more support. I was having problems with a router I wanted to tip. Might have been easier with this router. But hey, it's done now. And I think... Well, we James Perry said, what, what's, what were you thinking now? <laughs> what were you thinking when you were... <laughs> and Hex Hair says, please go straight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so what's it? What are, you, what are you thinking, Mark? What were you thinking? What was I thinking? Again, my my mind was a blank again, wasn't TV it? TV one hundred and one says your router looked a little wobbly. Um, it was a bit wobbly, yes. It wasn't easy. What are you doing with um, that camera? I'm trying to find my thing so I can zoom out again. Might need to take it up. There we go. So. Oh, oh damn! I've done something. Right. What have you done? I'm trying to move it. You've moved it. Can you move it up? It's got to be head off. Thank you. So. Uh, you've got another question mark, right? I'm just going to try it before I do anything else. TV101 says, is it easier to route the truss rod channel before cutting the next shape out? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I read that without. Sorry. <laughs> well, how annoying is that? Just yeah. a tiny bit short. I'm going back in. I'm going to make my slot a bit longer because it's not fitting from there actually. Uh, Mark, just before you start the round, so harder than calculus is asking about the truss rods and do we. Yes, are truss they... rods are available on the site. Are we using two way? They're, they're two way truss rod available on the, on the site. Um, the one that I'm actually using here is just a one way truss rod. I've got some one way ones that I want to get used up so. And, and listen, Mark. Boo said, this is a lot of messing about. Could you not have done it right in the first place? <laughs> that's, that proves the point, doesn't it? Yeah. That is the point, isn't it? Right, so um, always do a test before you take your piece of wood out. And I did my test and I decided to extend my the fat bit of my slot a bit. So I'm just going to do that now.
So before I remove it from this board, let's just make sure that it fits. Uh, Mark, Dr. Crypto uh, we're in. says, why not chisel the last bit? Good. I could have chiseled the last bit, um, but I thought it'd be easier to route it. Um, it's a good three quarters of an inch there, so I could have chiseled that last bit, but um, it's just easier to route it. Um, the reason I route this bit is because um, your router's already set up on the center line, so it's really easy just to change the cutter and uh, and just do an extra bit. You know, there's no extra setting up really, except for changing the cutter, and it's a lot quicker and easier than um, than chiseling that bit out. So there, yeah, my truss rod fits. It fits into the slot and it's just slightly too deep. So um, oh, nice. in the end up, I'm going to be gluing um, a piece of wood in on top for a fillet, which is then later planed flush ready so that we can glue on the, uh, the fretboard. So there, we've salvaged it. We did it. Couldn't have done it without you though, guys. Couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> right, um, Tin Marb says, uh, next week please, can Mark show me how to insert the truss rod after having glued down the fretboard? <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. Well, can I just say something? I did once have to route the truss rod out from the back of a guitar um, and then insert a new truss rod from the back. Uh, but that's another story. We'll save that for another day. So there, it's salvaged. We now have a um, scarf neck blank. And now I can just carry on with that as if it's any other neck blank. Um, so the next job would probably be to drill the tuner holes and then thickness the, from the back of the headstock. So one thing people get confused about with a scarf neck is... Um, we normally on on a guitar we would thickness on a bolt on anyway from the front of the headstock but on a scarf neck we do it from the back so what i would do is um, cut this bit off and i do that by surfacing with the router as i mentioned earlier so if you want to know more about all that, how we do all that kind of stuff, then head over to the uh, guitar making website, guitarmaking.co.uk. Sign up as a premium member and then you get access to all the courses, past, present and future. And I guess while I'm on the subject, here's Penny. So you regulars all know that um, we're currently working on adding a guitar finishing course to our Guitar Making Academy. Um, we already- Did you say guitar finishing? A guitar finishing oh. course, yes. <laughs> Five years in the making. So um, this, this is the latest example that we're using on the course. So I'm using this as an example of um, vintage amber how to do a vintage amber neck so this this is um the color it started with and then we've just added some amber to make it look old so we're, we're trying to make this guitar look old not second hand but vintagey old so basically um darken it down so you know how um wood over the years it becomes warmer and a beautiful golden amber color so we're basically adding a bit of um, age with a bit of amber. And um, yeah, that's our latest example. Penny, as christened by you lot. Eventually there's gonna be the, uh, the penny inlay in there. We'll get to that. <laughs> but for now, this is serving as an example on our finishing course, which is, um, I'm really working hard on trying to get all done by Christmas. Um, guaranteed not to get it all done, but what I want to get is I want to get the basic framework of it up, which will arm you with all the basic techniques that you need 
to spray any guitar, any colour you like. Any of these colours and basically any other guitar colour that you've seen. I'll be showing you how to do all that and more. So that's our latest example. You regular guys will already have seen um, the piece of 400 year old walnut for Roland's custom guitar. So that's a bit of walnut from Glastonbury, by the way, folks. Um, so full on gloss finish, absolutely beautiful. So yeah, Lewis has been operating the gun and I've been filming him from all the different angles. And uh, we've got some pretty good stuff, I think. Maybe see if we can get you a preview or something pretty soon. And so here's Penny, the body for the Penny neck. And this is, again, I'm gonna do this, um, a vintage amber. So it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite colors, amber. So to go with the, uh, with the amber on the neck, it's gonna be amber and we're gonna put a nice dark, darker burst. So um, vintage amber burst it's gonna be. And that's gonna be one of the examples on our finishing course. And many more to come. So yeah, this is also gonna be an example of uh, fake binding when we get that far. So we're gonna use this one as an example for how to do fake binding. So yes, lots and lots and lots of stuff planned and um, lots and lots and lots of stuff already in the can and on the timeline currently being edited. So one of our premium members has also contacted us who's a, he's actually a professional um, editor. And so we're, we're gonna be talking to him about how we can maybe, he could maybe help us um, get some of these films out a bit quicker. Look, he might be in the room, he knows who he is. We'll, we'll message yeah. you this week. <laughs> so yeah, appreciate that. We do appreciate that. And um, hopefully we can come to some arrangement where um, we can help getting some of our films out. The problem is that um, I would not wish editing me on my worst enemy. Editing me is an absolute nightmare. And I know that because I do it myself. <laughs> Yeah. You see, um, I don't work with a script, and so only I know which bit I said right, unfortunately. And so I find it, at the moment, I find it impossible to hand over editing to another person. Um, but what we need to do to get more quality films out to you guys is and start trying to work to, more to a script. And so... Um, it would make collaboration a lot easier if we could work that way. So we're working on it, and Carol's got her hand up again. Right, well, um, so uh, uh, there's, all, there's all sorts of interesting things going on. Um, David Stead, um, he, uh, he's asked about uh, a possible topic for the future. Sorry, I seem to have no... Lost my, my lips have gone all rubbery. Um, uh, possible topic for the future, gluing a cap or top to a body blank. What are the steps? Now, have we, did we do that? I believe actually that um, I did, I glued this one live on the internet. This is a drop top and so it's complicated by having this angle on it, which I don't know if you can see. Can you see the angle? There's a slight angle, you know, the elbow calf. It's not showing up very well, is it? There you go. So uh, this is actually more complicated than it needs to be. And I, I showed you how to do this um, in a live stream. And so if you look through the, the guitar making channel, you should find um, it's called Drop Top. If you just do a search for Drop Top, you'll find it. Um, and actually glued this cap. So gluing a flat cap is just easier because there's no angle. So you should be able to um, follow that and just simplify it for just doing, doing an ordinary cap. Uh, so hopefully we've got that covered. If there is anything that you're not sure about, then head over to the forum at guitarmaking.co.uk. The free community full of enthusiastic, like-minded people um, like ourselves. And um, 
we pride ourselves on being helpful and we're not just there just showing off. We do like to do a little bit of showing off, obviously, but that's not what we're there for. We're there um, to help you guys. Um, that's what I was put here for. It's my job. Yeah, well, can I, can, I just run, can I just run through some of these things before you move on? Go on then. Right, so, um, there is no moving on, Carol. Okay, well, well, I'm let's done. wrap these up then. So Thomas, uh, he's in the chat. He says he thinks that he thinks you did this on purpose. You've got the slot on purpose. <laughs> to have a reason to go online because you miss miss everybody in your free time. Yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> yeah, I just can't um, wait to get put myself in front of a camera. And, and make mistakes. Um, we've and, got, um, and do talking. In the chat, in the live chat today, we've got Mangheta Yahao. I hope I've said that, said that right. Um, they've been watching uh, the catch ups. They've watched, they've subscribed for a long time, but this is their first time watching live. <laughs> yeah. And, and he, they've asked them, is this every, is this regular? Yes, it's been regular for about eight months um, or so. Live, that we've, is. we've missed the odd one or two um, for various reasons, but pretty much every Wednesday and Saturday. 1 p.m. our time. Um, yeah, we broadcast uh, from the workshop and I usually do some kind of physical demonstration um, and we answer questions live and we do our very best to make your experience of guitar building as easy and pain-free as possible. I've been doing this I've been teaching people to build guitars for over how long, Carol? Uh, since since 1999. <laughs> since 1999, you do the maths. Um, yeah, as you can see, you don't have to be um, very clever. <laughs> if I can do it, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Um, things. Well, let's get them through them then, Carol, because I'm done here. Okay. Right, okay. We'll do a last round of questions and then we're done. Any questions we don't get to, head over to the forum and we'll get them there. Right, well, um, Hex, Hex here has, has said that he would um, love to have some uh, poplar burl, um, just as a point. And, I, and so I, I just wanted to say that like, if we get asked for something that we don't already have in stock, I, I usually I try local woodyards or yeah, people if you're that stuck, I know stuff stuff. Email Carol. And, and Carol, um, but I also Google. Carol's got all the contacts. Well, and it's but it's a really good place to start with people with yards locally because you might be surprised with what local wood yards have got, um, even if they can't process it. And we have occasionally been sent uh, people have bought lumps of wood and we've processed them. You know, we've prepped them for them, haven't we? If yeah. Can. If you've got a piece of wood at home and you want to make a guitar out of, but it's the wrong size or shape or whatever. You can send it to me and I'll um, turn it into a ready to use blank for you. And that's something we've done for people in the past. So, yeah. And I should also say that if you've got a, a lump of wood that needs to be turned into acoustic back and sides, then David Dyke, uh, Luthier Supplies down in Sussex, they, that's, they've got the tools to do that, haven't they? OK, well, yeah. Don't do that. Right. Um, so Mike Abbott, Michael Abbott. Hi Mike, how you doing? Is saying that, um, that landed on my head by the way. Um, That's what is, I was aiming for. Saying you seem to have rather a full bench of guitars at the back there. Yeah, cheers Mike, well spotted. Um, Do you want to buy one? <laughs> We've got a few in the back room as well, haven't we? We'll have to get the full, the full kit out. Right, and then last... if, if somebody doesn't buy these guitars, I have to eat them. Okay. Oh, and can you say hello to Rick? Got to survive somehow. Richard Papalo is um, saying it's the first time he's caught us live as well. He's watching in. Hey, Richard. In well NYC. done. We're here every Wednesday and Saturday, one p.m. GMT. And then the, uh, another, the last thing, Rock and Roller, uh, nine one two said if I if I get um, premium membership as a gift, right? If I get it as a gift, um, will I get instant? Can I get access instantly? Yes. So this is one thing that's come up. Um, it's just the way the website works. No, no, he's asking that uncle, say, so will he, will he just be able to get in? Yes. Yeah. If you buy the premium membership, you get instant access to all the courses straight away, past, present and future. You also get a discount on everything in the shop as well. So you'll notice once you've signed up as a premium membership, once you've become a premium member, if you go to the shop, you'll see that all the prices have changed <laughs> and you'll see how much you can save. 
and especially if you're going to buy something like a full kit then um you'll save the, your membership um i'm not here trying to get rich i realized pretty early on that, that and every guitar maker will tell you this that guitar making is not a good way to get rich um if you want to make a fortune making guitars if you want to make a large fortune making guitars you've got to start with a small one no that's not right <laughs> oh we should have stopped ages ago Carol. No, listen but you've got to answer if you questions. want to make a small fortune building guitars you've got to start with a large one that's that's the um what they say in the world of guitar making it's not a good way to make a lot of money that's not what we're about we're about trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys to build guitars and so um, I wanted to give something back so you support us we support you you become a premium member and then you get discount on all the stuff and so and access, access to that, that's what it's all about emails and stuff. Right. oh yeah and you get instant access to me if you want to ask me a question you get a direct line to ask me a question there's a special button only for premium members. But it's not instant access to you because everybody is in different parts of the world so you're not awake 24 hours a day. But you should take note that if you do buy it as a premium membership as a gift to someone, this has just come up recently because someone just did it, um, it goes instantly and so there's no way to delay it until Christmas. So um, just be careful. If you want to buy it as a gift for Christmas, then um, contact Carol. Well, I've got my hand up furiously because what what um, what we've done is um, I know I can hear you jewellery jangling. Right, well, so it should. If um, <laughs> if we've changed the, the the words on the website, yeah, we've updated the, the site just so it looks different, so that, pe that if it's to a avoid gift, any confusion. Then. And if anybody's considering giving it as a gift, they should definitely not tick the box and yeah, contact me unless you want it to go instantly. So if you find yourself, if this, if you're watching this back on Christmas Eve <laughs> and you've forgotten to buy everybody a present, yeah. like uh, all the digital things, I don't know, that, I don't know anyone that's ever happened to, <laughs> except every year to me. Um, yeah, so if you find yourself, it's Christmas Eve and oh no, I haven't got anybody a present, then you can go online to guitarmaking.co.uk and buy premium membership as a gift and all we need is their email and it goes instantly as a gift they instantly get access to all the wondrous goodies or <laughs> well I, let's as you've raised this what i'll be saying what, what i would say um, especially if it's christmas eve is that you can, if you want to keep it completely secret you can sign you sign up yourself and then what you do is you you sign it over you give the yeah, of course, that's the other way you can do it, is you can buy it for yourself and then transfer the ownership Once you've when given you're ready. But um, any confusion, let me know. Um, and honestly, I've got I've had that many premium memberships for my Christmas presents. It's, it's, it's an amazing way to... Carol, you're a premium member, aren't if you? you forget, if you forget a, a, a present, it's an amazing gift, isn't it, to receive? It's better than nothing, isn't it, Carol? It's better than nothing. <laughs> right, All right, then. So I think... Um, Having said all that, I think our work here is done. We've salvaged our neck. And then that can now become another example in our, in our finishing course. That can go on the pile. Brilliant. Um, maybe I'll even do some more work on it on Saturday. I don't know what I'm going to be doing on Saturday yet. Well, we're going to be, we're going to be making some announcements aren't we on saturday yeah some announcements but they won't oh no but listen you what you have got to say, yeah, i might carry on with this or i might do something completely different if you've got any ideas what you want me to do leave them in the chat or in the comments cheers folks what what you won't be doing is saying it's come to my attention again will you no Cause... unless something else comes to my attention why <laughs> it's been hilarious though hasn't it because people everybody thought Thought, right, so everybody behave good. yourselves, <laughs> do as you're told, do everything in the right order, and then you won't have to do scary things like I've had to do today. Um, yeah, and how could we have avoided all that? Of course, I should have listened to my own golden rule, and I should have done the check twice, cut once. <laughs>